Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas and insights to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. We've got an amazing guest today. We're talking about how to take expired listings and the concept of prehabbing, and we'll get to that in a second. But first, let me bring in my esteemed co-host, yes, the junior grandmaster himself in the co-pilot seat. As always, Greg McDaniel, what's up? Matt, dude, it's Friday, baby. Woo! Oh, God, that was way loud there. I think they heard that all the way across the entire echoing area of my, uh, of my condo development. But I want to show my new purchase. Yes, and I, I think everyone here is going to like this. Yes, that does say mildly offensive. I think it's a pretty good shirt for me. Uh, anyone that knows me, I've shared that a, uh, a few times, and uh, I cannot wait to wear it out in public and have someone look at me double like, is he offensive or not offensive? I don't know. Anyways, I, don't, I thought that was super, super funny, but I got to tell a quick story, and then we'll... We just and if you guys you. go to my Facebook, huh? Did we lose you completely there for a second? Was it Got just it. me? Hello? Yeah, did we lose you for a second, Greg? No, I have been right here, Matt, talking to you. I, Apparently, I, you I believe you. The question is whether anybody else heard you. You tuned me out. That's, how, right. that's how our friendship is. <laughs> God, you know what? I'm just going to mute myself. All right, this is what you get. No more of me. Stagnant photo. There. Now you can tune me out. Jerk. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, let's go. All right. <laughs> Okay, so uh, what, what was your rant about, Greg? Oh, I have too many leads and there's so many different categories. I'm getting fr freaked out that I'm going to lose business because I just you know, have too many leads. So yeah, well, do you come from the calls. Really, is, is the Bevinator helping you get all that stuff straightened out and categorized? Yeah, Chris Tam from Firepoint, Bevinator. Um, I hired my ISA, Phil from Talon um, Prospecting out of Sacramento. So it's just, it, everything's coming together like a hand in a glove. It's, it's a beautiful thing, man. Beautiful thing. Right. 2017, I'm going to crush some heads. Good, good, good. All right. So let's bring in our special guest, Melanie Ferguson. Melanie, how are you? I'm great. Thanks, Matt. Yes, we're excited to have you because this is a cool topic and we've got a lot of stuff to, to get into. We talk a lot uh, about expireds with Aaron Wittenstein and we're actually doing a class with him upcoming um, on expired mastery and stuff. So we're interested to get somebody else's take on it that isn't in New York where everybody speaks in sentence fragments. And if you're on the phone for too long, that will, they will threaten to, quote, eat your children, which apparently is a thing in New York. Oh, wow. Particular what? So I'm guessing, I'm guessing small city... Texas is slightly different, but, uh, but you tell me, uh, give us kind of the 60 second bio on who you are, where you are and what you do. Okay. Let me see. Let me see if I can do this without any notes. <laughs> who, who am I? <laughs> um, okay. Well, I'm Melanie Ferguson. We have Ferguson Realty. My husband and I have our own brokerage here in a small town outside of Dallas, um, which is also outside of another town called Denton. It's little D, but, um, we are in Crum. And yes, things are a little different here. We don't eat anybody's children. Uh, <laughs> we've been doing this about 14 years and expires is what I uh, cut my teeth on and still can make a really, really good living on if that was even all I did. Uh, but I am on a mission to share our methods with everyone that is interested in adding expires to their lead gen programs and not having to start from scratch. So. Uh, we were with KW for several years. I was on um, the listing mastery panel and helped also uh, write some of that uh, materials. And uh, let me see if I do have any notes. Okay, CRS. I don't want to not mention CRS. And uh, basically our claim to fame is that we convert about four out of every 10 expired calls we make. So that's pretty exciting. Wow. Yeah, very, very that's cool. great. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's, let's dive in with something super, super practical because everybody and their mom is curious about this. And surprisingly, mothers that aren't even in real estate desperately want to know where do you get your data and what, how do you make your calls? What systems do you use? All that. I don't know why everybody and their mom wants to know that. So we'll cover that and get it out of the way right up at the top of the show. Are we talking about mine or Greg? Mm -hmm. Yours. Oh, yours. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Greg, Greg doesn't call expired listings. They're literally well, like are none in the East Bay. So yeah, there are none. Greg, Greg is going to shut up and let you talk in this show. Well, <laughs> I was just curious because Greg was complaining about all of his leads. So I was wait, ready and waiting. For your, for your <laughs> uh, no, I, I do circle prospecting. So I wish I could have expires. I mean, that would be, they're they way easier, way easier. Well, circle prospecting is a really hot, hot topic nowadays, and everybody is hopping on that train because it's a great, great uh, source. It's just one of those that is gradual, and then all of a sudden, 
you've got all the business. So, um, yeah. you know, you just have to have patience with that one. This one is a little more for uh, high D's like myself and people who Ooh. have a lot of patience and we can just have that instant gratification, make that call and boom, appointment, boom, sold. Yep. So uh, leads up uh, bulk and seven is my lead uh, source of preference. And uh, they have gotten all new makeover with all their systems and their program. And I just love, love, love it. They automatically send everything to my database, which. And so I use them for more than beats. I put all of my past clients in there. So everybody that I need to actually contact or talk to are in there and they do have an auto dialer. I personally don't use the auto dialer. Um, but a lot of people love auto dialers. So that's in there. They pretty much are a one-stop shop. So. Interesting. Okay. No, why, why don't, why don't you use the auto dialer? Is there a, is there a reason why behind that? Um, well, I just, I haven't had a need to, because if I just make the specifically targeted calls that I pick by hand, it's pretty effective. Mm -hmm. And um, the people I don't that I get really a negative pushback from from getting a, a robo dialed uh, voicemail left type situation are the ones I probably wouldn't have called in the first place. So I just okay. find it easier to target my calls. You know what? I was having a conversation with another agent uh, two nights ago on the McDaniel Challenge, and she was she and I were chatting back and forth, and she said the same thing like you, Melanie. She she's like, Greg, I, I use I have Mojo, but I'm more effective just using my Nugget, and I'm like, really? I'm like, well then cancel Mojo. I mean, it, it, it's amazing. You know, ever that's why this business is so amazing. No matter you can do it any way you want that's effective for you. That's the beautiful part about it. There's no nothing is going to be cookie cutter. Exactly. Right. And once you hit, uh, if you can get ambidextrous, you can have two phones and two <laughs> dialing with both hands. That's great. <laughs> Call it double, double long dialing. It's kind of like multitasking. I mean, you know, we all aspire to do more in less time, but a lot of times we can be more effective if we just focus. Yeah, and there's a, mm -hmm. there's a funny study about harder. that. They did a study at, I think it was Harvard. They did a study um, that when you smoke weed, you're about 5% dumber. Okay. When you multitask, you're 10% dumber. I'm like, wow. huh? So there's an upside to weed, huh? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what you gather from that study. That is one of the funniest things I've heard you say in a long time, Greg. <laughs> all right. That's, that's a bit. That could, yeah, that, that'll be this, the, the next step in your, uh, your budding standup career is that joke. <laughs> all right. Let's, uh, let's take a question here real quick. This one caught my eye because I think both of you can bring uh, value to it. So uh, this is from Lead Gen Scription Objections. And guys, if you're not already a member, please go, go join that group right now. It's 30,000 plus members. It's an awesome group. It's not ours. Uh, it's no. just a good friend of ours and it's a great group that we belong to. So Sue Hutchison asks, what program do you, any of you use to create nice looking market reports to send out to your database or along uh, with a landing page for seller leads? So Greg, let's start with you. What do you use? Um, when I, when I'm just going out to meet people and it, do, it doesn't have a landing page attached to it. Um, but I, I use, uh, RPR. So if you guys don't know what RPR is, type into your search, uh, to your URL up there, go N A R R P R.com. If you're a realtor, then you have uh, access to it. Majority of the MLSs have it built into their, to their MLS. So go take a look at it. You, you have multiple different types of reports that you can print out. You can do property reports, neighborhood, neighborhood reports, mini property reports. I mean, and the list goes on. But you can go in there. You can, you can make a report for an investor by tweaking the numbers. I mean, it's a, it's a very robust system. Um, lots of charts and graphs that you get completely lost in. But if you have an S and a C personality and you want to dive into the details, it is a beautiful report. So that's what I take out. And it's, it's very, 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 very effective. People love to dive into it. And Melanie, how about you? Do you use anything like that in your process? Expireds or not, it doesn't matter, just in general. I do not. Okay. Cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> <nope>. <laughs> well, it just goes to show you, you don't need a nice looking market report to take an expired listing. So there, take that. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> take that expired. <laughs> I love it. All right. Yeah, so let me I ask mean, you this. Let's, let's talk about the process a little bit is, uh, do you have like a pre-listing packet that you send out beforehand that paves the way for you at your appointments or you just get on the phone, get to the appointment and bring something with you? Honestly, Matt, we have introduced probably about four new businesses to our life. And so, uh, 
in order to fit it all in, and I'm gonna now it sounds like I'm multitask, but um, in order, <laughs> I need the weed. No, I'm kidding. Um, in order to um, fit it all in, I just I do. I'm very very methodical um, on purpose. I make the call, get the appointment, and take the listing. So um, as far as pre-listing appointment uh, paperwork, I most of my appointments it's an um, immediate situation. I want to get in that afternoon, if not the very next day. There's no time really for me to do that. Um, I don't make them a week in advance or three days in advance. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh, but I do have something that I do uh, send to them if they don't want to set an appointment and they need something, you know, material to see what we do or why we're different. So, and I'm going to offer that to everybody on the call today too, a copy of that. Perfect. Very nice. where, where do they go for that? Um, it's, it's our website, the mustardseedmethods.com, and it's going to have a copy of your free 89 point marketing plan on there. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I want a copy. Want <laughs> no, no, you can't have that. Greg, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, pipe down. Melanie and I are talking business. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So before we go any farther, I wanted to mention this because, because I want people to understand Melanie kind of where you're coming from. So give us an idea of what, uh, what your last year was, what you're on track to do and kind of what your average price is down there outside of Denton. Okay. Well, um, our years have been pretty steady. Uh, they don't fluctuate huge in the amount of volume. What I've seen happen though, with being more focused and on purpose about who I call uh, based on price point that our average price point has gone up. So we're doing about 12 million, but um, it's gone from, um, you know, 50 deals to only having to close 35 deals. And it's just my husband and I. So, um, and this is not all we do. So uh, the, Price point uh, has gone from an average of 154 to an average of 206. Nice. So really, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah, very, very. Cool. What, what, what do you what do you what do you see driving the prices up? Well, my personal choice of who to call. Mm -hmm. a, bit more, <laughs> a bit more selective. <laughs> stop! Stop calling lower price people, right? <laughs> I, was like, I well, should have seen that I mean, coming. You're gonna naturally you're going to naturally get some, I mean, you're going to get some past clients and you're going to get some um, referrals and, and some things that are, we call come list me, but for the things that I'm going to, what you would consider go through paying for, I'm going to make sure that they're worth my time. Yeah. Very nice. Sense. Now a quick, quick question. Now what, 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 what has led you to, um, call the higher price ones now versus in the beginning? Was it a, and I'm just spitballing with it. Was it confidence? Was it time? Was it just the ease that you knew you could go get the lower price ones? I mean, what, what, what was the mindset there? It's totally confidence all day long. Yeah. Okay. Knowing, and, and I'll tell you, and this is so funny. And this is so funny that you played right into that. Um, <laughs> knowing what to say. And that's why we've come up with these scripts that I'm offering um, everyone on the call, the free script that I use that uh, is proven, 100% proven to work, um, that uh, you can make for your first calls. And it's on that website, mustardseedmethods.com, and it's the first little button that'll say for your free script. So knowing what to say is foolproof. I mean, you really cannot mess that up. And if they don't respond the way you'd have them, they weren't for you, so. Really interesting. Now, what was that transition point for you when you're like, okay, I am good enough to call these higher prices? Was it like, was it a certain listing you got? Like you just like you just ventured out one day and you're like, you're like, screw it, I'm just gonna go call this two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house and just see what happens because you're just feeling extra brave and all of a sudden, bam, they got they they bit and you're like, oh my gosh, I can do this. I mean, was it or was it a gradual build or what? What took place? Uh, you know, honestly, I can't put my finger on that. I mean, I would have to say, yes, I've, I, I think I shied away if they were, you know, 500 and up, I just didn't call. And, mm -hmm. uh, maybe we had a referral or something and I got to experience and get my toes in the water and was like, ah, oh, they're nor they're like regular people. They're not scary <laughs> at all. You know? yeah. um, Higher price homes don't bite. I swear to God, don't. guys, they don't and, bite. <laughs> You know, they come, of course, with their own set of problems, but it's it's different. <laughs> and it's 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 all you know palatable. You can deal with it, and so it, you know, that will build confidence too. You just got to do the first call. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm actually being interviewed by my buddy Rod Watson in San Diego on his show next week about breaking into luxury markets. And I'll tell you one thing: I've all I've always worked in a luxury market. Our our average price is about a million three, give or take. 
Um, but I'll tell you one thing, the higher price people are really, really genuinely kind people for the most part. I mean, there are some dickheads. I mean, like every other market, but you know what? They're intelligent. They've done it more than once so that they understand the process so that when you go in and you talk to them, they're not like, they don't need their hands held as much as the first time buyers or first time sellers. That's been my experience. You know, Melanie, what about you? I mean, is that kind of what you're seeing too now? Well, Greg, I agree with you. And what I did learn from doing the higher price points, um, well, first of all, I really liked that I got three times the money for the same work. <laughs> the <laughs> Funny same how that works. <laughs> um, but a lot of the times, and this isn't something you just think about, you have to experience, you find out that, you know what, these people a lot of the times are business owners too. So mm -hmm. they get it. They respect that you do something for a living that pays you. And so they don't try to get you down on your commission or, you know, they're almost too embarrassed to ask you to do a discount. You know, it's not something that would just be normal for them to ask. And I love that. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I just yesterday had one of this, one of the guy, his name is Amit. Um, I've, we've helped him rent his house out, you know, twice while he's lived in Switzerland for his job, which that could not have sucked. <laughs> I mean, honestly, Oh, I got to go to Switzerland for work for two years. Oh, bummer. Um, but, uh, he came back and he's an employee mindset. And he, he tried to cut me off at the knees on my commission. I'm like, you son of a bitch. Seriously, after all the work we've done for you, and you, you fucking try to cut me off? And no, not only that, he took away the listing because he's going to do it himself. Sure, have fun with that one. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go buy a house over on the peninsula. And if you write the contract, can I have half your commission? I'm like, get the fuck out. No, 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 not happening. And he's like, and that, and that, and he was an employee mindset. But the business owners... They own multi-million dollar homes. Not once have they been like, okay, so can you give me half of that? I'm like, and they get it. It's, <laughs> it's so true. They get it. <laughs> they do. And that's, that's true. And, um, you know, what I've learned is that the problem with real estate and why it's so hard is that the public doesn't understand what we actually do for a living. Mm -hmm. now, I personally have a degree in psychology and I never knew how it was going to benefit me until now. And I just let them know, listen, we take on one of the most emotional, stressful times of your life. Forget the negotiation, forget the paperwork, yes, any monkey could do that, but not any monkey can take on the enormity of these people's stress. We yeah. take the brunt of it and the problem lies that we make it look easy mm -hmm. and we don't complain, yep. at least yep. not to the client. So <laughs> our spouses care all about it, but you yeah. know, the client doesn't feel the pain that we feel. And so we're paid pretty much in line with what we do, I feel. And um, not everybody can do that. No, I completely agree with you. I always use the analogy that real estate agents are kind of like ducks. We're all calm and good looking on the top. Feet are going about this fast and under, under the water trying to propel us forward, but we look all calm and you know, just cruising, but it's not that way at all. They're, we're constantly dealing with a, some sort of disaster that we're trying to push off or that we're dealing with and trying to block our clients from having to deal with it themselves. We're trying to handle it. We're taking the impact for them and they can just keep on going blissfully unaware. And I, and I agree. We, we, do, we do get paid for our money. And so all of y'all that's listening to this, either live or in the future, don't give up your commissions. You're worth it. At least the good ones. We, and everyone who listens to this show is a good one, Matt. <laughs> no matter what you say. All right. So let's, uh, let's take a quick second, mention a couple of things, and then we'll dive into the expires and we'll start with some role play and stuff like that. So first of all, so it's uh, mustardseedmethods.com and you can get, so there's free copy of expired call scripts and um, yeah, all, there's a video there and all kinds of stuff, ultimate 89 point marketing plan. So there's a ton of stuff there. So definitely go there and get all that stuff, guys. Uh, and then um, Melanie, how do people, if they wanted just to send you referrals, for example, in your area, what's the best way to connect with you? Um, can I screen share? Let's see here. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah. menu on the, bo uh, the top left hand side is the green box with the white arrow. Got it. Let's see here. Let me go to that page. And for all of you guys that are listening on iTunes and Stitcher, you need to get your butt over to YouTube and watch this because this is going to be epic and you're missing out. <laughs> That's right. Just saying. Just saying. That's right. All right, Matt, can you see that? 
No, we're getting a black screen from from your side. So, yeah. Uh, well, okay. you figured that out. In the meantime, guys, go. You can check out our, our website as well, McDanielRealEstateSystems.com. There's two things there. One is Greg's free scripts or Greg's favorite scripts, which is a free download. It's got all of Greg's stuff for circle prospecting, client communication, uh, online buyer lead and seller lead follow up, all of that good stuff. And then on um, on that page as well is our high tech, high touch real estate farming course. Uh, that is a $99 course. That's eight and a half hours of me sitting down and squeezing Greg's brain. What, like, what, a, what, uh, like, a, what like, fruit? like Gallagher does to watermelons. I, uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what, am I, what fruit am I going to be today? <laughs> <laughs> You're a watermelon, Greg. So I took Greg's, I cracked it open like Gallagher. I got all the good stuff out and put it onto that, uh, that particular training course. So that's the, uh, both of those things are McDaniel real estate systems.com. And unfortunately, Melanie, I'm still not seeing uh, your screen. I don't know if it's just me guys, but I'm, I'm only getting a black screen. Here, so, a black screen. Um, there is a way, Melanie, where you can, when you go to share your screen, you can just share the entire screen, which are just exactly share what you're looking at there on your computer screen that might be the best option because it's almost like you've got like two monitors or it's just sharing the wrong thing essentially so anyway yeah and um it's just not doing it so that's fine okay. it's um you can just if you if you go to the mustard seed methods there's also a facebook page and you can just go to mustard seed methods facebook page and private message me and that you can send me a referral that way okay perfect that's awesome Okay, cool. So let's dive into the, the actual scripting a little bit. So Melanie, what's your standard kind of, first of all, give me, how are you starting off and why uh, are you asking for the owner or asking for them by name? Like, how do you, how do you get into the call? Well, um, that's a great message. I mean, message. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's a great message, Matt. Um, <laughs> that's a great question. Uh, basically, you'll see on uh, the Master C Method site, the uh, initial script that's on there, it exactly walks you through it, exactly what I say. And I always start with just introducing myself, and I'm very light and fast about it. And in fact, on that, on that exact script, you'll see, like, um, let me just backtrack a little bit. So people do business with people they feel like they know, like, and trust, right? Yeah. Right. So it doesn't necessarily have to be someone that they know, like, or trust. It just has to be someone that they feel like they know, like, and trust. Interesting. Well, the person that feels the best when you're having a conversation is always the person who talks the most. Okay. So mm -hmm. if you're doing all the talking, um, you're probably going to walk away from the conversation thinking that was great. You know, <laughs> um, you know, but you may not know what went on in the conversation. You're like, well, it was just one way. So a lot of times it's not so much, Matt, what you say, it's what you don't say and when you don't say something. So I call it, um, this is where we get the mustard seeds because people are like, why, why would you call it that? Um, you plant the seed with the questions that you ask and then you um, water it with the questions and the weight and the quiet, the silence is the sunshine and it's going to mm -hmm. let it grow. So when you are silent, that is when the prospect has the opportunity to play right into your hands. And a lot of times they'll do what they don't want to do, but maybe what they need to do based on you letting them self-discover. So we just start out with introducing ourselves. It'll say on the script, pause here. And that means don't say anything, anything until they speak and answer your question. And because we get a lot of times we get nervous and we start talking and we don't stop talking and yeah. we try to answer it for them. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you do want me to come over, but um. <laughs> <laughs> self, -inv self invitation. Oh, I'm sure you, you're dying for me to come over. Aren't you? Yeah. 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 No. Oh, yeah. damn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, the funny thing about that, Melanie, is I, I, I was listening to a podcast that, couple of weeks ago and a unique thing came up and it comes to your whole point about being silent. Now the human body can go, I think two or weeks without like what food, like a week without water or something like that. Um, and then, but uh, you know, the human brain can only go 36 seconds without a thought, without some sort of stimulation or it freaks out. That's why people won't shut up because the brain is continually, it's like, it's like starving and it needs oxygen. So the world's best negotiation is completely silent. If you make your point and then just clam up, the other person's brain will start freaking out and they will just start talking. 
And if you allow them to talk themselves into the self-discovery, as you say, you can literally be silent and get yourself appointments. They're like, well, no, you shouldn't come over. You stay silent for like, a, like 30 seconds. They're like, well, maybe you should. I mean, I can do, I mean, I, I, can, I can do an appointment now. Maybe, yeah, I can do, uh, you know, I can, yeah, let's do it right now. <laughs> You're just like, that was easy. <laughs> awesome, Greg. It's awesome. It's so true. So true. And you can use it in personal relationships too. If you want to have a power over someone else, just shut up and they will talk first. Guaranteed. That's exactly Not. right. That's exactly <laughs> right. I love it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, uh, I'm taking Greg's very perfect <laughs> advice right now. <laughs> Matt, come on, do something. Say something, man. Say something. Say something. Okay, so I'll take over the show. Right. This is a good idea. How about we? Uh, why don't we role play that out, Melanie? If you're if you're willing, we'll we'll pit Greg as the uh, the oh, typical boy. expired listing. You want to well, try that? Let me out? get my script in front of me. Hold on. Right. Uh, <laughs> you better be ready, Melanie. I'm coming for you, girl. I actually don't have the script up. I mean, I I have it memorized, but I just uh, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Geez. Play by we'll play by ear if you don't mind. Yeah, that's fine. Because I want I want to hear kind of the the phrasing and the tonality and the style of how you're, you're pausing, like when you're pausing and things like that. And I've got the, uh, I signed up, so I've got the script on its, on its way here. Um, but I haven't seen it, the, the email come through yet. But anyway. Um, it's so, not an email. On the top five. Oh, that's right. That's right. It's, yes. See, so that did should... exactly what I accused other people of doing is I assumed and yeah. I did not. Uh, I know. I know. Johnson, lock it down over I there. I know. <laughs> All right. Anyway. All right, so Melanie, what is my mindset towards you in this role play? Do I know you? Do I like you? Do I not like you? Have I ever heard from you? What, am, what, is, my, who, what is my mindset? Um, you are just a regular expired, so I guess you're frustrated, and you've probably had a lot of people call you. So I'm a real grumpy cuss. Okay. Well, you don't have to be that grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll dial back my grumpiness. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm ready for you. Fire. Okay, and I'm talking to Greg? Yeah. Yep. yeah okay. So. Hi there. I am calling about this home for sale. Are, are you the owner? Let me guess. You are a real estate agent, and you want to list my house, don't you? Well, I can appreciate your frustration. Have you had a lot of calls today? Honey, there's another realtor on the phone. <laughs> uh, yeah, I understand. Get to the point. What's up? So you are the owner? Last time I checked. Awesome. Unless, unless, unless the bank took my house, I am, yeah. Awesome. Well, my name is Melanie Ferguson with Ferguson Realty, and my husband and I um, sometimes invest in properties as well as we do help people who still want to get their house sold. Are you still thinking about selling? Are you offering to buy? You know, I wouldn't know unless I came and looked, but I first want to know if you're even open to selling. Well, I mean, do you have a, I mean let's, let's just cut, the, cut, the, cut through the mustard here. Do you have a buyer or not? Honey, I, I, I'll tell her your thoughts. Give me a second. Well, Goodness. John, or Greg, whoever. <laughs> <laughs> whoever you are. <laughs> um, I tell you what, uh, I certainly wouldn't know if I was interested unless I saw the home first. And also, yes, we have lots of buyers. I just wouldn't know if it would fit any of the ones that, in particular that I have right now that need a home in the next 30 days unless I saw the home too. Um, would you have time tomorrow that I could come by and take a look at it? I don't know. I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty big deal. You know, I got a lot of stuff going. Um, I mean... So let me guess, you're going to give me some time. So you give me your times and I will check with my, my calendar because I, I want my wife here with me. You know, she's my better half. She's, my, she's the boss of the household. So I got to have her around. Um, so I, I got to check with her and her calendar. So uh, what, 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 give me some times that might work for you. Okay. Well, I'd have tomorrow at 9 or 10 a.m. 9 or 10. Neither, neither, neither of those are going to work for us. We're both working folks. So we, we're going to be, be Yeah, yeah evening is going to be better. Okay, well, I can see you as late as 6. Would that work? You couldn't do 6.30? 6.30. Because um, I'm, I'm going to get home. I need to get a quick bite of dinner, and then my wife and I can sit down maybe about 6.30-ish. Okay, I'll make an exception. I can do 6.30, but I'm only going to take about half an hour. It only takes me a few minutes to go through your home. We actually specialize in homes that should have sold but didn't, and it only take me a few minutes to tell you exactly what happened. Um, I know what happened. It didn't sell. Yeah. I, got that part. I already got that part done. Well, Greg, if it would have sold, can I ask where you would have gone? That's a pretty personal question, ma'am. Oh, you feel like that? Okay. Well, a lot of times you're staying local or moving abroad. And if you're staying local, I didn't know if you'd already found a home. Look, we're going through a, a, a sensitive time financially, and we don't know where we're going to land. Awesome. We're, we are, are, everything's up in the air. Okay. Well, then let me ask you this. Um, if you 
didn't sell it, would you be able to rent it? Uh, no, we, we, we can't rent it. That's not in the cards for us. I see. Okay. So do you have a specific deadline for the home to be sold then? Yesterday. Yesterday would have been good. Okay. We, 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 gotta, we, we, we have to get going. Look, it, don't waste my time. Even if you, now, if you can come over and do something, that's going to be fantastic. If you can do 630, let's rock and roll. But we, I need to get this thing sold. This is stressing me out. I have a heart problem. My wife is you know, crying in the other room. We need to get this thing going. I understand. Well, I tell you what, um, then let's plan on getting together tomorrow. If I um, bring you all the information that you uh, need to make a decision, would you feel comfortable making a decision tomorrow? I don't know you, so I, 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 you know, I can't make that decision right now. We, I have to meet you first. Well, I have to meet you first as well, Greg, and I appreciate sure. your hesitancy. Um, all right. Well, I look forward to meeting you tomorrow, and I'll bring you some information. And, you know, I'm not here to make you do, make a decision. However, I'm going to bring you enough information where you can make a good decision. Sound good? That sounds wonderful. I appreciate that. Sorry for being grumpy. We've had a lot of pushy agents call us, and you've been the first one that's actually been considerate and heard, my, heard what I was saying. So my apologies. Honey, she is a nice one. Damn, woman. Um, you know, I will, I, we will be here at 6.30. Awesome. And is this the best number to reach you if anything changes? Uh, you can get me on my cell, 925-915-1978 as well. You can text me there. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Greg. I look forward to it. Me too. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now. Bye. Nice. See and I may or may not want to work with him, but you're right. And I know you try to be nice at the end. Most of the time, they start being nice about the middle. So, <laughs> uh, so Greg was, was a little belligerent for your taste, which I completely understand. Hey, easy, Johnson. Yeah. yeah so, well, so tell me about the turning point. Like, at what? I mean, we all, you know, we all know what that what that feels like to get that initial pushback. But you're saying that they usually turn you know, in the middle of the call, they usually turn you know, a little bit quicker for you. So what, what's that transition like? At what point of the call do you usually feel them start to like relax a little bit and open up to you? Um, a lot of times at the beginning after I say, because I didn't get to follow my exact script because um, he kind of guided a little bit at the beginning and he was a tough nut to crack. Um, <laughs> so a lot of times I'll get to say, you know, from the pictures, it looks like a great property. Why do you feel it didn't sell? And once they start, and I don't say a word after that, um, once they start uh, spilling their guts with their anger and frustration with the last agent and, well, they didn't take good pictures or they, they just stuck us on in the yard and never did anything. When they start being able to unload all of those emotions, they get a more calm. Because um, they're, they're getting all the, all the poison out of them. They're, you're allowing them to vent. Yes. You're a sounding board, right? Yes, and then they're starting to feel more comfortable with you because they've already divulged all this stuff to you. Yeah. And then when you start asking them, you haven't said, can I, can I come over? You know, you're still asking them curiosity questions like, um, mm. where are you headed? And then you're getting them into their dreams. Oh, my gosh, well, we wanted to build, and it's halfway done. And, you know, or um, it can be stuff that's sad, like, well, we've got to, you know, get a house room for my in-laws or whatever. <laughs> and right. so um, – but the more they get to talk, the more comfortable they are and the nicer they get. So uh, getting to those questions where they're allowed to say more uh, personal information is when they, they get a little nicer. And you then when I that. redirect it to, when I redirect it to, well, would you consider renting it? That gets them every time because they don't expect that question and mm -hmm. they just immediately think you're out for a commission and you only want to list it. Um, so once you divulge that you would possibly find someone to rent it or go a different direction at all, they feel more comfortable. Yeah, I did. I didn't expect that coming out out of your mouth. I was like, what, what? No, I thought that was a great redirect. Phenomenally done. Interesting. I also like the, uh, just right up front, Melanie, where he mentioned that for, you gave your name and then Ferguson Realty, so obviously, and then you mentioned that me, my husband and I invest in real estate as well as help people buy and sell. That was an interesting thing. I mean, do you feel like that, uh, do you use that a lot? Is that a predictable part of your script? Is that something you threw in just to deal with and redirect the pushback you got right off the bat from Greg? It's what I used with him because he was so um, upfront, not happy. Um, I'm out to get him. 
I, I, all I'm going to do is lie, you know, and, and even if someone doesn't own a single rental, um, maybe you would definitely be an investor if the situation was perfect and you don't know if that situation is perfect. You haven't seen the house, you know, you don't, you don't know. And maybe if all the cards lined up, you would buy their house, but as your first investment. So I would use that at any time that you feel like someone's just like, are you a realtor? I'm like, you know what? Yeah, but I can also buy your house if I want to. Right. So let's be nice here. <laughs> <laughs> Behave yourself. I hold right. the key to your future. Yeah. That's right. I like that though. That's good. Okay. So, so the silence comes in when you, when you get them. And I like this. You say from the pictures, it looks like a great property. Not that the pictures look great. Not the, right. like it's like the phrasing there is very specific. It get, has to give you an out and like yeah, it has to lead into a lot of other things. So I like that phrasing from mm -hmm. the pictures. It looks like a great property. And then why do you feel like it didn't sell? And then just shut up, even if it's a long pause, right? And just exactly. wait until they say something, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And they'll either complain about the other realtor or they'll get excited about their house and start trying to sell it to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so let's talk about the uh, probably the more typical of those two, which is the complaining and frustration yeah. about their agent, about the market, about the showings, about the buyers. Um, how much of that, like, do you are you careful on what you agree with? Do you pile on? Like, how do you handle that and, and redirect the frustration into something that actually suits what you want them to do? Totally great question, Matt. You don't ever pile on and you don't ever add in your own two cents. You don't ever agree that the other, your competitor sucks, okay? Yeah, um, you never throw anybody under the bus. You just simply say, I understand. I understand. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I completely understand. I've lots, and then you do the feel felt sound, you know, feel. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Yeah. Sound, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Simply tell them, you know, I understand how you feel. I found a lot of people in your position that have experienced a lot of the same things. Well, what I discovered was, you know, if everything was done right um, or in this way versus that way, you know, totally different outcome. So you don't ever pile on or throw anybody under the bus. You just simply redirect at the end of it and always console them with, I understand. I, I, I hear you. You know, it's so I'm, I'm so sorry you know, I'm sorry, you know, because a lot of times they're, they can be deeply distraught and you're just like, I'm sorry for the industry. We're not all that way. <laughs> you know, um, I always sometimes say, I have to say, you know, if you got food poisoning at a fast food place, would you really never have fast food again? I mean, you know, there's a lot of people out there, but you know, there's some good ones. So yeah, I like the, that. The, the, the thing I like most about the feel, the triple F script, the feel, felt, found, is that you humanize yourself. You understand what they're going through. You're not just a blood-sucking, commission-minded individual who's called a real estate agent. You've gone through this. You have emotions. You're empathetic to what they're dealing with. I, when I've used that, um, like just like you, Melanie, I found it to be – I, I, you can kind of hear the air come out of their anger. You know what, when they, especially, you know, this is what I found. Because then you show them a happy ending. You show them that there's light at the end of the tunnel, which is, it was what they're really looking for, is, right? is that what you found as well? Oh, yeah. 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 Good, good, good stuff. Yeah, very, very good. Um, all right, so let's try an example of that. So I feel that Greg talks way too much on the show. And I, can, I think you can understand how I would feel that way. But what I found is that for some reason, people like to hear Greg talk, and so yes, literally do. nothing is going to change. Nope. <laughs> Feel felt found. Nope, never ever yeah. gonna change. Yeah. Nope. all right. <laughs> God. <laughs> Such a dick. <laughs> I feel like this is going nowhere, but oh. I found that it's still very entertaining. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> At least we can serve one purpose in life. Okay. So, uh, so you let them vent for a little bit, which we didn't really get to in this particular role play. So take me down that path a little bit further. So you're, you, are you trying to, you're not trying to pile on, but you do want to give them the chance to spill their guts. So once they do, they're probably not going to bounce it back to you automatically. They're, good, they're just going to make a declarative statement and then just blop, like drop it back in your lap. So what, what are you trying to redirect them to? What, what's the next ideal or the, the ideal next step for you? And how are you making kind of that segue to where they just dropped an emotional or frustration bomb on you essentially and then you have to do something with it? Well, okay, Matt, again, it's more important to know what you shouldn't say 
than what I do say. Um, I do not start saying, oh, well, we do that better or, oh, we do that differently, or no, we would never do that, or, well, we do open houses and we'll do them every day. You don't want to give advice before you get acceptance. So, so, uh, so let, let's, let's, let, let's run this really quickly. You want to just pick it up and I'll just, you, you ask a question and I'll, I'll you, know, do, you know, give my emotion on why, why I didn't think it didn't sell so that they can see this in action? Yeah, but hold on. <laughs> Let me, let me finish answering this question. So um, you want to get agreeance before you give advice. And so when you basically what you want to do is get them to say yes. You want them to say yes as many times as possible so they're in agreeance with you on things before you ever give them any sort of advice about what they should do or what should have been done. And uh, that's why I kept trying to get Greg at the end to just commit to a yes on anything. And finally, I got him to say yes on um, something. Uh, I think it was after we got the appointment time. Mm -hmm. And I went back and tried to ask him some more questions. And he said yes. I know he said yes because I, I listened for a yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to get off the phone without a yes. Okay. So, so, you're looking, all right, so you're looking for agreement on something, hopefully several things. And so when they're, when they're in the process of kind of explaining what their frustration is are you then kind of are you are you one of those that like you try to restate and get their confirmation that you understood them correctly is that part of the strategy for that sometimes but that might take a while so i'm yeah. not that patient. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> okay so it's not about well what i hear you saying is which i i hate that i hate when people do yeah. that to me i use that too all the time and it works very well thank you very much uh, yeah it's it has to man it has to be delivered in the right spirit though because otherwise it comes off super salesy and condescending yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Do we want, we want to role play this real quick? That's fine. Okay. So ask me the question, whatever you're going to ask me. Um, is this the let's owner? Go, yeah. Let's oh. go from, well, let's go from the pictures. Let's make sure yeah. we get that in there. Yeah. I want to do the pictures. Whatever. Okay. You, Melanie, you're driving so ship. You just you, tell me where to go. So Greg, why do you think the house didn't sell? You know, Melanie, I really don't know. You know, we, we thought we had the right agent. I guess we didn't pick the right agent. You know, he, he came with all the qualifications, but I mean, I didn't, there was no communication. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, he, he came out here, we, 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 he did, he took photos, he did the whole internet thing, you know, it was out on the, the Zillow and Trulia and we had people come by. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm completely lost. I, I'm my, we, we were trying to buy another home it, it didn't, it, we couldn't buy it. My wife is, you know, distraught because it was a dream house. We, we, you know, we needed the extra bedroom. You know, we just, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I just, I mean, can you shed some, I don't know. I, it, this, this whole industry is so frustrating. It is so frustrating. How can, how could, I would never trade my job for your job. How do you do this? Because it's, it's gut wrenching for us. Oh, well, I understand, Greg. I hear you. I, I have heard this from several homeowners where, you know, they had a, poor experience and the home didn't sell. You have all these expectations and they're not met. But um, we actually uh, are in the business of exceeding your expectations. So again, we specialize in situations just like yours. And it would only take me a few minutes to come by and kind of evaluate what happened and what we maybe could offer you different that could get you the results you're looking for. Would tomorrow at one or three work for you? Yeah, I, one's great. You know, my wife is off work tomorrow and I can swing by on my later lunch. That'd be perfect. Okay. We just want to get and this guys, as fast as possible. Okay. And so I'm going to cut us off right there because um, I, what we haven't talked about, Matt, is that the goal, and it's at the top of my script, the uh, single greatest objective is to get an appointment. Right. So I'm not on that call to solve the world's problems to answer a million questions, to get into some dialogue that I'm not interested in answering um, over the phone, like commissions or what do you do different or do you have open houses, things like that. So these are all objections that I can address at the table in person after they feel like they know, <laughs> like, and trust me. <laughs> so my single greatest objective is to get that appointment. So anytime they're going to unload and all that stuff, I'm going to Acknowledge it, of course, but I'm going to shift as quickly as possible back to getting that appointment. So, all right. So let, let's let's role play that a little bit, if you don't mind. Uh, how, how do you spin that? So let's say Greg just throws out the, all right, look, you know, uh, 
the last agent was, you know, he may have been incompetent, but uh, he only charges 5%. So what do you charge? Oh, I can appreciate that. And there's a lot of agents who will do that. We actually do have a competitive commission plan and I'd love to show it to you. So when I come out um, tomorrow, would one or three work better for you? I'll show it all to you. Okay. One. So it is just redirect right into the, uh, the assumptive kind of a closed script. I do. And then a lot of times if they're very hard nose, well, first of all, I may not want to work with them, but yeah, that's kind of where you decide some things on your own as well. Um, then if um, I can not shake them and they're just like, well, seriously, we're not even going to talk to people who won't agree to whatever. Then I just say, well, I can appreciate that 100%. I understand completely where you're coming from. Money is the most important thing to most everybody. And so with all due respect, mine is more of a visual. I need to show it to you so that you completely understand it. People can miss, you know, understand numbers all the time. I don't like to do that over the phone. So mm -hmm. would one or three tomorrow work best? Okay. Yeah, redirect, redirect, redirect. Just, and, you, just and, to get, you just want to get your button into that house so that you can go belly to belly, face to face, eyeball to eyeball with them, start the relationship healing because they think all of us agents suck and then go from there, right? Yes, and a lot of the times, uh, I don't even know what I was going to say, something about um, they they want to, they, I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Uh, well, let's finish off because we only, only got uh, maybe four, five minutes left where we can actually dive into some content here. Um, let's talk about the, uh, the concept of prehabbing. So when you actually get in an appointment with an expired listing, what is the thing that you're using? How are you positioning prehabbing to really set yourself apart? What, is that, what does that term mean and how are you explaining that to a potential client? Okay, great question. Well, prehabbing is a term that we've coined lately that basically just means we're going to get stuff done differently this time around to get the property sold. And whether it's something that's expired or it's a new listing, we're going to make sure it's ready to hit the market and sell because it is a hot market where I am right now. It's a seller's market. Things are selling, you know, in their coming soon stage. So that's part of the prehabbing is we want to create urgency. We want to create curiosity with the market. And so we obviously always do professional photos. So when I go on and I see an expired on the MLS, and I can see the photos were not professional. I already know I can sell that house. I already know I can sell that house. Um, and so then I just need to get the pictures in line with the people and the pricing. And of course, pricing is huge on the prehabbing. Um, I kind of need to know what I do before an appointment is I, I, I do one little thing. I do a little sticky note and it says for me, for my purposes, a walk away price and a price that I would like to get it and a price that if I go in there and it is a naked pig, then um, this is what I need to list it for. You know, so there's only so much lipstick you can put on the pig. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you lost so me there with the, with the naked pig, but that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Me too. I'm like, what? Yeah. Well, because, okay, so because, so it's yeah. It's a dog of a listing, yeah. So, yeah. so they yeah, haven't, well, uh, it hasn't been upgraded since the 70s. The color palette well, is avocado and orange, you know, that oh kind of thing. The naked it pig like your house. Is, is more to a, um, is, is actually mentioning one that I recently worked with <laughs> that I had gone in there and it was definitely a pig and it was a cluttered pig. And mm. then she thought that uh, prehabbing meant um, emptying it just a naked pig and uh, yeah uh, well, <laughs> sometimes so uh, I gotta go in sometimes a home can benefit from a good dumpster dumpster run <laughs> yeah so uh <laughs> what we've come up with is a template mat that okay. i'm gonna um actually be putting out there in the next few weeks um it's called um well it, i'll tell you in the next few weeks but it's for <laughs> staging okay that any agent can use and it's gonna have a uh, room by room pretty standard things that an agent, they do not have to learn how to stage. They do not have to pay a stager. Most of these homes can be fixed with just a few tweaks. And so it's going to have on there um, standardized things and a template format that any agent can use to advise their client in, in the way of getting it ready for the photos. And so they can email that off to them. And it's great because up in the corner, it says this is a 500. It's like a whole disclaimer. We're not guaranteeing this is going to sell your house, however. <laughs> and um, 
we're not guaranteeing it's going to sell for X number of dollars more either. But this is a $500 service offered to you at no charge if you list with us. So um, that's something that I offer my clients once I'm at the appointment. If I feel like um, I need something extra to win the listing, I'll say, you know, we do have staging services. Normally my clients pay X for it. However, I'm just going to throw this in. And so nice. um, I like it. I like that a lot. Very, very cool. Yeah. And the checklist. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm big on checklists. I love, I love the idea of having that stuff ready because I think it just psychologically destroys most credibility issues that agents have. Cause you, I mean, you talked about how people want to feel like they know, like, and trust you. And that, that trust feeling is tough to build because they don't know who you are and you're an expired listing. And all of a sudden you're, you're at their house the day after you called them for the first time on the phone. Right. Uh, so you need that arsenal of tools to, to reinforce that you actually are, are who you say you are, that you actually specialize in this sort of thing. Like there has to be st other things like that. Which speaking of that, do you guys, um, how do you demonstrate like your, your testimonials and stuff from past clients? Okay. So I'm sure you saw my slides. I do have a Google. Um, I mean, I do have a YouTube, uh, video on there and it's got, um, an expired testimony. So what I did was, and use um, Facebook Live, obviously, as much as you can. And I try to actually set goals with my Facebook Live to uh, have a certain number of live posts per week um, so that I don't forget to, I don't neglect it. But so at the closing of an expired, I went in and actually I started the expired process. You can go on YouTube and find it, but it basically says um, it's right before the appointment and it's showing before appointment excitement. So you've got to get yourself all ready and pumped up and that way that'll convey to the client. And then that same appointment, I came out afterwards and did a Facebook Live and told them we took the listing. This is so exciting. They're going to do this. They're going to do that, et cetera. And then, um, while it was under contract, I went and, because uh, it went quickly, I went and toured the neighborhood. It was historical homes and I showed everybody what it would be like to live over here and oh my gosh, um, the home has got a buyer, but you know, you can still come see it and see if it might be something you want to put a backup in on. So we went through the whole process and then at the very end, I did the testimonial video at the closing table and we thanked our title rep, we thanked our lender, and that way when we went back to Facebook, we could tag them and give them some kudos. And we just talked about how they had been on for um, over 1,500 days with other agents and we got them and closed, you know, closed them within 30 days mm -hmm. and got their little input and it was great. And we got, I got business off of that. I had people, strangers uh, comment and then private message me and say, I saw this and uh, want to talk to you. My house is not selling, you know, that kind of a thing. So yeah, it's effective. And so then <laughs> the final part, which I don't know, but uh, my client did a video and I posted it and they, he carried her over the threshold. It was pretty, <laughs> oh. I mean, they weren't newlyweds, but they were just so excited about the purchase. That's awesome. Of their That's new really awesome. So. That's right. That's what you get here on Real Estate Uncensored. Uh, you get uh, informative content and your heart is warmed. So take that. <laughs> <laughs> I think this All is right. the one, the only show that people's hearts have been warmed. Yeah, yeah, it is one of the only ones. Yeah, when you and me, and, when, yeah, when it's you and me, Greg, there's not a lot of heartwarming going on. Anyway, all right. So, uh, so Melanie, remind us of where where everybody can go to get the scripts and all the good stuff that you have. Okay, mustardseedmethods.com with an S. So. This is total side note, but we were at a, a burger place yesterday and they had mustard sitting out <laughs> and they are, it was all Asian owned and they spelled mustard M-U-S-T-E-R. So it's not, it's not muster, it's mustard. It's oh my God. M-U-S-T-A-R-D seed methods.com. That's uh, right. I would have like, totally just hey, muster up the strength to get me some mustard. All right. Oh Lord. So now you won't forget. And also Matt on there is our personal uh, referral link on Vulcan seven. And oh, awesome. apparently now to use Vulcan, you have to have a sponsor. And so if you go on there, I'd love if you ever put uh, mustard seed methods as your sponsor or no, it's Melanie Ferguson. I think once you get there, but gotcha. um, yeah. That's how you do Interesting. Can yeah, that's so yeah. So really there are, you have to go through a sponsor to get Vulcan 7 now. Yes. Interesting development. All right. 
Well, very cool. Uh, Greg, would you like to uh, give people a quick plug for the McDaniel Challenge? Yeah, guys, I'm actually going to do something uh, different, Matt. Uh, Talon Prospecting, guys, is my ISA. I'm going to give a shout-out to them. I'm going to give a shout-out because they are crushing it for me. If you guys want to have an ISA that absolutely murders it, you know, good – good way um and says massive they don't they don't get leads for you they set appointments for you they send 11 appointments for me in one week guys wow it's it's unbelievable so give me a call private message me if you guys want to know more about talent prospecting um and then mcdaniel challenge guys november 13th 2017 is my next available date uh it's a uh, hour of one-on-one private coaching it's a lot of fun we get to kick back and relax and hang out it's done at 6 p.m pacific standard time i do it because i love you guys and i want to see you guys succeed so private message me for talent prospecting and or if you guys want to book on the mcdaniel challenge i love you guys and i'm glad that you guys were here today that's right all right guys All right, well, make sure to subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher, depending on whether you want the video or audio versions. And uh, remember to go to McDanielRealEstateSystems.com, check out Greg's favorite scripts, check out the farming training course there. All that stuff is there. We've got a couple of uh, really kick-butt episodes. So first of all, uh, I'm going to be broadcasting live from Jeff Cohn's office on Monday. We're taking questions. So if you have questions that you want answered, uh, message me on Facebook. You can find me, just uh, search for Pursuing Results. That's the easiest way. We've got uh, a couple of really killer interviews next week. So Wednesday is John Agostinelli and Chris Mashaw, the authors of um, Crashes, Bubbles, and Ponzi Schemes, Why, uh, why Home Ownership Isn't Always a Good Investment. Which that's oh. going to be, oh yeah, we're, we're going to get into it. Oh um, my, you know this is a real estate show, right? I'm aware, yes. Okay, I just want to, just want to clarify that. It's very cool. Well, these guys are both in real estate. This is like, they wrote a book about what the, what the crash looked like from inside the real estate business yep. and why we need to stop telling everyone all the time that home ownership is the ideal for them. Uh, we really, really need to do a better job of being a true advisor to them and figuring out what the best circumstances for them so that we don't contribute to the next bubble. Uh, then on Friday, we've got Mike D'Ambrosio. He's in the Bay Area. He's the co-host of a real estate radio show there. Uh, another guy that we met at the car event. So guys, if you want to be on the show, a great way to do it is to meet us in person. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> we've had a couple of people on that we've, uh, that we met in person at the car event already on the show so far. So, uh, if you guys, uh, we'd love to see you if you want to host us. Um, in fact, Greg Dale Archdeckin, who was on the show a couple weeks ago, reached out yeah. to me about having us come in and speak to his local realtor association. So we need to uh, have a call with him about that. But if yeah, you guys are awesome. interested in something like that, we want to do stuff in mainly uh, San Francisco, San Diego, Chicago, Florida, and New York. So if you guys are in any of those areas and you want to help put something like that together to bring us to your fine state uh, or your local office, we would love to do that. Just reach out to us, private message one of us, and we'll get on the phone. Uh, introduce us to your broker, your team leader, whatever the case is, and we'll take it from there. That's it. Yeah. And the, so Jenny, uh, where to go? Jenny Dawson Coleman wants to be on our show. So I, she just hit me up. All right. I'll have to, I'll have to we'll see who she get her on. All right, cool. All right, guys, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. We will see you on Monday. And uh, yeah, Melanie, we really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thanks, guys. guys. Bye. Bye.